hello and welcome to my channel i like to say a big thank you to everybody so i'm recording this video on july 2nd 2023 and we finally got into our 10k subscribers i like to say thank you for everybody i hope these resources have been successful and as usual i'm rooting for you so in today's video i'm going to show you how to write and create a cv to study abroad if you've been through this process for a while or even if you are new here you know that a cv is part of the requirements i'm going to show you a simple and easy way to create a cv so if you are new here once again i'm barbara Borgi, and my goal is to help you to study abroad either through a fully or partially funded scholarship or even to self-fund so without wasting much time, let's look at how to create a CV to increase your chance of getting admission and scholarship. So before we start, I want to answer the question, what is a CV? A CV is basically a document that gives a summary of who you are. So without meeting you, once I take your CV, I should be able to have a picture of who you are, your, edu your education, your qualification, your career, and what you've done. We normally use, so with a CV, I would decide maybe if you're applying to study abroad, I, de I would decide if you qualify for this program or you qualify for this scholarship or not. So it's an important document and it's very important that you put in the steps to create a strong one and that is the purpose of this cv at the end of this video i'm going to share with you the resources i use to create this cv you can see this is a really beautiful template and i actually created it using overleaf if you are interested i could make a video we could even make a workshop where we could create this cv together by the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to get some templates from Word or online and for you to recreate something similar. So let me know if you want the workshop on how to create a CV using latex or overleaf. It gives you the professional look. So let me know. So without wasting much time, let's look at the various parts of a CV. I will first start with a one-page CV. This is, especially those who are applying for the Macaul McBain. It requires you to have a one-page CV. So I'm going to start with a one-page CV, but then I'll also look at other information that you can include in your CV based on what you are applying for. So the first part is the header, and this should include your personal information. What should your personal information be? Your name, an address of where you are located, this is just a dummy to give you ideas on how to create your. So some of the information are true, some are not true. So yeah. So this is your number, especially like if you are applying for something out of your country, it's important to include the country code. This is your email address. Please use a professional email address. Don't use beautiful girl or you know those kind of emails we used to use when we were young. Please use a professional email. So even if you are, if you, if you can just create. A specific email for these kind of applications will be very great use your first name and your last name at gmail.com or at whatever extension it is so this is a website and you can include this or not especially for those who are doing other things maybe you have a blog you have something that you think is interesting you have a github include this so that people will know the kind of job you are doing linkedin if you don't have any information on your linkedin it's not necessary to put it there if maybe most of the work you are doing either academic or professional is on your facebook it should be something professional it should speak about you you can include those links if it's not important remember don't include it the whole idea is to paint you in a positive limelight so any information that you think does not put you in the limelight or give you a good feedback Please don't include this as part of this link. There are some questions I ask. Should you include your date of birth? Should you include your picture? Should you include your nationality? The answer is a yes and, and a no. This is based on the country you are applying to. In Europe, they don't mind if you include your date of birth. In North America, like Canada and US, this is really 
not wanted in europe they would like you to include a picture if you want to or not this is not the same in north america so for whatever country you are applying to it's very important you just do a quick google search to look at the kind of information they require of you on your template on your on your cv for school sometimes they even tell you the kind of information they are looking for so you visit their website and see the kind of information they are looking for and you use it for your personal information so for every application you do this should be tailored so this is the information you need so your research interest i include this if i'm applying for a research position like a research based masters or a research based phd this is interesting for them to know that okay this is what you are interested in if you're applying for a coursework or like for the mccormack bin this might not be necessary but if you want to you can include it so this is why i put this here and your education you include all the education you've had at this level your high school might not be necessary but let's say if you are just in undergrad maybe you could do your undergrad and your high school so these are all things that you should consider you just have one page so you are looking at the information that is necessary so now let's look at the education so you start with the name of the school and the program you can decide to also start with the program like msc civil engineering then the name of the school is up to you to decide whichever one you think is more important. If you think the program is more important, you can put it first, then the school. It doesn't really matter. But be consistent. What does this mean? You don't start with maybe the name of the school and in the second one you put the name of the program first. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Be consistent with whichever format you want to do. Then for the name of the school, you include the country, the city and the country and like the date so you started in september 2021 to karen so this will let them know that you are still in school so that is it so you know uh, yeah and your your cw or your grades is it important if you graduated with good grades i suggest you put it there like especially even if you're applying for an excellence based scholarship it's important you put it there. But if you know your like first class, second class, you know your grades are good, it's good you put it there. If your grades are not too good, I would advise that you do not include it. So this is a decision you have to make to decide. And at this session, you could also include all the awards you've gotten. So something like that, I included graduated top 10% of graduating class. I think it's important. I think it's important that they know. So even though like it's not a four over four, it's like they give them a fair that, oh, you were one of the good students in your class. If maybe during that you got a scholarship, maybe best graduating student, you included. Maybe you got a dean's award. During every award that you got that you think is important, you can include it there. This is a one-page resume or CV. But if you are doing like more than one page, you can include just a section where you have your honors and awards and achievements. I will show you in the standard version of the CV. And here I included my thesis to let them know like what I worked on, design of reduced school experiments for machine structure subjected to blast load. It's up to you to decide whether you want to put it there or not. If you're applying for a research-based master's, I would suggest you do that. If not, you can do relevant coursework. So like the undergrad, I did relevant coursework. And to get a relevant coursework, I would suggest you visit the university you want to apply the program and look at like the coursework you've done that shows that you have the prerequisite knowledge for the masters so like when they look they'll be like okay she's done this she's done that he's done this he's done that so i think he has a background to achieve this master so that is the idea behind this it's very important that the formatting is also on point so if you are putting full stop and sure everything is full stop if you are not this is a gp and this is a cwa I would advise you convert all into one form, but I don't think they, I'm not really sure. But if you know, let me know in the comment section. Do you think it matters if you are using a GP and a CWA? And it's always important you give the scale. Don't just put GP and just put 3.4. 3.4 over what? Over 5, over 7, over 8. Because every country and their scale. It's very important you add the scale. So now let's look at the next section, which is leadership and volunteering experience.
these headings, one thing you should know is that they are not fixed. It's based on what you are applying for. As I said, I created this with the with in mind that the person is applying for the McCall McBain scholarship. So with this, your leadership and volunteering experience is important because it's part of the criteria they are looking for. If you are applying for a research-based master's, it's important that maybe after your education, you put your research and teaching experience because that is more important. If you're applying for a program that requires work experience, it's important that the work experience is after the education. So as the headings are not fixed. I am, I am, I'm keep on repeating it because it's very important that you decide how to structure it. So now let's look at the leadership and volunteering experience. I chose two things to highlight. So one thing is I'm including my YouTube channel, which is Barbara Boaje. So this is the location of when I started and this is my role or what I do there. So like there, I have a version. My role was a publicity head. So what do I do there? So I have built an online community of 10,000 scholars, establishing a valuable resource for students seeking admission and scholarship to study abroad. I've created and implemented scholarship a scholarship database with over 700 global scholarships. This is very important, and this is where this resource comes in. This is from Harvard. This is the resource Harvard. That's what I used to create a CV. This is a resource Harvard teaches their students how to create a CV. And they talked about that. It's very important that you use action verbs for your resume. So I come here, and let me see what I have used. I've um, built, it's, it's showing leadership, created, it's showing innovation. So um, I could go here and maybe I'm going to search built. So let's see. So built is technical. So I have like a technical skill here. So I'm trying to use as much action verbs as possible. I've created, so we go back again. We look at created to create. Okay, so nest, 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 previous. Okay, so it's 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 an action verb, but it doesn't show. Let me try created. So yeah, it's creativity. And one thing, it's very important that if it's something in the past, you use the past tense. If it's in the present, you use the present tense. So this is very important to have in mind. So I have built, I've created and implemented a scholarship database. I empower students with actionable tips to proactively navigate. I review and provide feedback. So this is how I got my, I, I used this to get my action verbs. I also used, Miguel also has a great resource to help you write your CV. I also used that to help me create my my CV. I'm going to share all these resources with you. So let's look. Let's continue. So um, and it's always important that you arrange your CV such that the most recent comes on top. So I will not start with my undergrad before my master's. No, I will start with my master's because it's the most recent. So it's very easier for them to see whichever one is more recent. I'm not going to read the rest, but if you want me to share the sample with you, let me know in the comment section. I will add the sample for you to use. So now I'll look at the work experience. So I was a teaching assistant. So the location, the date, and I organized and facilitated tutorials for an undergraduate course in elementary structures. So that it's also very important that you quantify what you do. So as you can see, there's a lot of quantification, 10,700. If you're able to quantify what you do, it's very good. 155, it's very important. Like it helps to calculate impact. So now we've seen the leadership, we've seen the work experience. Now let's look at the skills and interests. So my languages, the languages I speak, English is native proficiency. My French is intermediate and the level is like a B1. The technical skills I know is Python, Latex. This is what I use to create this CV. I know Office, so that's added my soft skills. And these are some of my interests. These are like my travel. 
And this is publications and presentations. So if you do, because in the McCormack Bain, they also ask you for original work. So that's why I decided to include it. So if you have any publications, this is a great time thing to put here. If you don't, that's okay. As I said, there are lots of headings, so it's up to you to play around with it. So here I have references available on records. So now let's look at the other headings you can also consider for your CV. So once we've done this, we can look at your honors and awards. So as I told you, if you don't don't include it here for like an extended version, you can especially if you have a lot of honors and awards, you can just have an, a section where you can state all of them there. I talked about the research experience. If you're applying for a research project, this is very important. Some of you complain that you do not have research experience, but this is the research. This was my thesis in my undergrad. I want to look at it with you so that you also have some ideas. So the topic of my work was driver's compliance to posted speed limit along the adjacent section of the Kwa Kumasi Highway, the location and the period. Perform the qualitative study to understand the factors influencing driver's compliance to the posted speed limit through interviews and questionnaires. Executed a month-long sports space study to identify the type of vehicles on the route and monitor driver compliance with the speed limit. Produce monthly progress reports and analyze all data obtained using an Excel spreadsheet. So it also shows like some of the skills I have and how I was able to achieve these things. So these are profession, professional affiliations. So apart from school, like what are some of the people, what are some of the organizations you are with, which I think is important. So these are some of the uh, organizations I'm with, and these are professional training and workshops. Something I also forgot to add is like, if you also have other certifications, you could also add it to the education section, or you can just create another session and include the certification. So this is, uh, this is how to create a CV. We've gone through the information. Now let me share with you this is, um, as I said, I, I use these two resources to prepare my CV. This is from Harvard and this is from McGill. Yeah, they've given you good information on how to create your CV. As I said, there are two things. If you want me to share a template of this CV, let me know. I'm going to do that. And if you also want us to create a workshop on how to create your CV using latest, let me know. Remember, I'm rooting for you until you hear from me again. Bye.